Hey guys, welcome back. Um, uh, in this video, I want to talk about a new concept related to jump estimation. So this is the new concept and the new series which I'm going to start. Okay. Before that, I want to take you through all the uh, things that has been covered in uh, my channel. Okay. This is the channel. So I have segregated uh, many playlists. If you go to the playlist, you will see that there is industry related contents and academy related contents. So yeah, as you can see, I have covered many series. So let me take you quickly. So one is uh, interview related questions are available. Okay, there are general guidance uh, to many questions are available. Then fixed point implementation is available related to MIMO, zero forcing, MMSC, MMSC, IRC, all these things are there in series number five. And uh, we have series number three uh, related to OFDM concepts. All right. Uh, then we have TAPI uh, um, related concepts, modulation relation concept and uh, local oscillator related uh, uh, concepts and even multi uv concepts there is just only one particular uh, uh, you know content there so apart from that uh, academia related contents will be useful for engineering students mtech students and research scholars so the first and foremost thing is all the gate short notes are available you can utilize around 80 notes are there and there are many tips which i would be giving uh, related to gate uh, 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 gate uh, examination and uh, there are many interview questions for telecom industry and guidance related to uh, many queries okay so and uh, even there are many general information and tips available so you can go through all these things for final year i mean in the in the final year you will see there is a wireless communication subject for which uh, you can have these two play playlists uh, which will help you to understand some of the basic concepts and related to OFTM. Okay, with this, I want to get started with the a new concept related to channel estimation. Okay, mm. so channel estimation. So I will take the simple model and this simple one in this particular video. Later on, we will develop the into advanced uh, concepts. So, so let's say y one is equal to h one x one plus n one. Okay. So here the thing is that this is just one equation, okay. But there are multiple unknowns. This is unknown. This is unknown. Even noise is also unknown. So let's say for example, uh, for now noise is zero or the SNR is very high, or we can keep it and we will try to see you know uh, under what conditions uh, your channel estimation would be better. So for now you can think that there are two unknowns here, okay. Then how to estimate my channel H, okay H1 at is a question mark so definitely in that case uh, we should be knowing uh, this x1 right so that is when we say that this x1 should be known to both the transmitter and receiver and this will become as a pilot pilot or a known sequence or you can say a reference uh, sequence okay there are multiple names so this is required and we got to know why this is required once if you know this, then uh, using this simple equation, there is only one equation. Now there is only one unknown that is H1. How can I estimate this? Okay. Mm, just a, just it's like just solving this equation, right? Before even going to any uh, estimation or detection uh, estimators or uh, algorithms, just solve this equation. So I would say uh, Y1 divided by X1, right? H1 plus N1 by X1. You know x1 you just divide by x1 then you will get your um, h1 actually this this will be h1 at so now what can you say about this this is my original thing but there is an error here this is the error so error is uh, n1 by x1 so when uh, uh, error is uh, n1 by x1 so to say to say uh, whether my channel estimation is good or not, uh, then what is the measure? Mean square error, right? So mean square error is given by you know h at minus h. You can say h1. So norm square and because this is scalar, you can just say mod square. So now what will be what what does it become? So mod square, right? Uh, so x1 square. This is noise of uh, uh, the power of the noise, which will be let's say sigma square, and this is uh, the power of uh, the x1 or pilot which you transmitted. Let's say power of pilot is p. In which case, 
what does it become? I can say 1 by SNR, right? So my MMSC is inverse related to SNR. If, if SNR is very better, uh, your, uh, your mean square is very low, which means that your channel estimation is very good, right? By the way, you can also say that, um, you know, when this is very low and this is also low and it, this is good, which means that, you know, if there is no noise, your estimates are good. Or if you have, if you are transmitting your pilots with more power, then also your estimates are good. Correct. I hope this very basic concept is clear. Uh, and, uh, and now you got to know, you know, uh, why you why you need to transmit the pilot. Uh, and um, and now the one one more thing. When we have done this uh, uh, division, right, x1. Uh, so we are dividing y1 by x1, right. So now there is a division operation here. We need to be a little bit careful uh, so so otherwise uh, there, there will be more processing uh, complexity right so we need to choose our x1 sequence very carefully and lo lots of research have been done on this uh, in the literature and in academia and as well as in, even in the industry so let us try to see uh, what are those sequences in case of 4g or 5g uh, OFDM system, okay, which is implemented even in our mobile phones or in the practical system. So that is another point which I wanted to mention related to X1. Now, the thing is that, let's say, um, you know, there are 10 symbols, okay, 1, 2, and it goes up to 10, okay, 1, 2, 3, up to 10. So now, here, I have transmitted my pilot, XP1. Hmm? So now, whenever we do churn estimation, right? Churn estimation, uh, we assume something that is um, the channel is constant for a certain duration. Certain duration. Here I can say ten symbols for now, right? So in the ten symbols, if, if the channel is constant, let's say that is just H one, then using uh, uh, the first symbol okay y1 is equal to uh, h1 xp1 plus n1 uh, here i have estimated uh, h1 at right then using this um, here i would have transmitted data xd1 xd2 like that but uh, just uh, the thing is that uh, i have taken only one equation and as i have solved it this might not be more accurate. Of course, uh, if SNR is very good, then fine. But what if SNR is not that great? Then um, in the second symbol also, you try to transmit XP2. So Y2 is equal to uh, H1 XP2 plus N2. Remember, the channel is constant, right? I have taken H1 only. So in this case, you have to divide by XP2. Uh, so XP2, so XP2. Right, then this is console, this H1, H1 you got. You have got two equations now, right? So you can take the average of these two equations. So then how, how do you take this? Let's say this is uh, uh, first and this is a second equation. Then if we take average, I will add this, this one, okay? Uh, you know, of course, uh, here to get H1 add, I would have divided this one, XP1, right? So this XP1 was not there. So if I take the average H1 plus H1 by two, so this will remain as H1 plus if I take uh, uh, average here, then I will become, it will become N1 XP1 plus N2 by XP2. And average means, so I am going to divide the entire thing by 2. So, so it will become 2, 2. Basically, if you see this, this uh, error uh, now um, is decreased by 2. Correct. So you have more samples to estimate your H1, uh, and uh, in which case your error uh, is getting decreased. And you can say something like uh, something like you are doing average. Uh, you know, if you do average, and your noise gets reduced, right? So basically, um, what I mean to say is, if you are going to go for more number of training symbols then your channel estimation is better so now the now the now the thing is it's a trade off so now out of 10 symbols i used two symbols to transmit the pilots and then remain remaining data 
but if you go for five symbols pilot five symbols data your channel estimation will be more good but of course you are transmitting very less data there is over it is too much so in which case you need to carefully design your system considering this trade off let us see in 4g 5g how things are taken care and uh, and let us see you know how pilot symbols or training symbols are allocated all right so i hope for this concept is also clear as of now so with this uh, basic concept uh, um, i want to uh, stop the video here uh, in the next video we will talk about uh, uh, you know right now we have just seen intuitively that uh, you know by increasing the number of uh, um, samples or number of uh, pilot sequence there was uh, um, there was a uh, uh, there was a uh, uh, betterment in the channel estimation but uh, we will try to see by taking some of the estimators from the detection or estimation theory and we will try to see uh, you know what answer what optimal answer that will give and whether that will match to the intuition or not and of course later on we will go to 4g 5g and let us see how pilot symbols are considered considered in the practical scenario and how exactly we need to do the channel estimation at the receiver end thank you very much guys if you are looking for more videos please do subscribe to the channel have a great day bye bye